thanks for coming, everybody. Uh, my name is T.B. Raman, and I'm uh, happy to have Kenneth Ingham here today. Um, Ken is uh, running a very interesting little company called Amazability. And um, the go their goal, and he will articulate this much better during his talk, is to create a seamless user experience for a large population of users, including users who cannot see, um, by using speech and natural language technologies. Um, the goal is to not make this thing look like a computer built for geeks, used by geeks, but rather something that you can just open up, talk to, and use. Um, it's a very interesting idea, and I think it puts a whole new dimension on the world of accessibility, which for, for a very long time has sort of gotten sandboxed into a very small capsule uh, defined by screen readers running on Windows. And uh, the type of work Ken's doing is very exciting because it really opens up the box and asks the question, what does real usability mean for the end user? So with that, uh, take it away, Ken. Well, thank you. Um, I want to begin by expressing my appreciation to uh, T.V. Raman and his colleagues for inviting me here today. Um, and I must say, um, I left uh, this morning to come to Google to do this talk dressed in, as you see, absolutely the wrong kind of clothing. Um, one of the disadvantages of being blind, of course, is you don't get to see the lovely scenery around this area, uh, and you don't get to see what people wear, or I should say, don't wear. <laughs> um, in any event, yeah, what I'm going to try to do today is tell you about um, where we came from, what our motivation was in uh, de designing the product that we're showing today, um, and also um, show you what we hope to do with it in the future. Uh, is that first slide up? Um, uh, yes. Okay. Why don't we move to the next slide? Um, just to characterize the challenge that we took on, um, as some of you may know, uh, the current approach to technology is to assistive technology is largely to adapt uh, Windows and Mac and other types of screens uh, so that the blind can track what's going on as they move the cursor about uh, the screen. Uh, in effect, uh, one emulates the screen uh, shots and at a very low level of the um, uh, uh, connection to the visual screen, uh, trap what's happening and speak it. Um, the difficulties are numerous, however, with this approach. While it's been wonderful and a lifesaver for many, um, it's only um, addressed a very small part of the need. Approximately 100,000 screen readers are currently installed. And in a moment, we'll get to what size the real target is. But that's a very small percentage. In addition, screen readers and adaptive technology general, generally are complex. You have to learn how to use the screen reader, and then you have to go on and learn all the applications you want to use through it. Um, it's difficult to use in the sense that it's slow. There's a productivity hit because you have to move around and hunt. And then lastly, it's expensive. The current uh, workhorse uh, screen reader on the market today is $900. Then you have to go buy yourself a, a computer with Windows and everything else on it to, be useful, to make it all useful. What we've done with our product, uh, the ADEPT-1, is to not adapt, but in fact to create a new form of assistive technology, which is easier to learn, um, it's faster, uh, and it's a good deal less expensive. And above all, we're aiming it at people who have little to no computer or technical experience, the vast majority of people out there, in fact. Uh, could I have the next slide? This gives you a sense of how big the target really is. Um, in the United States, there are slightly over 10 million people who are visually impaired. Um, the American Foundation for the Blind goes on record by saying there's 1.3 million who are totally blind or have no useful vision. I've heard numbers 1.6 and somewhat higher. <clears throat> We took the larger number and took away all of the older folks, not for any reason other than just to be conservative. We took away all the children, again, uh, not because they aren't a good target for what we're trying to do, but began to be conservative and just focused on those who were in the employability range. Then we cut that number substantially and came up with a four million figure of people who we think could benefit from the approach we're taking. 
there are 45 million or so other disabled in this country, people with a whole range of disabilities where manipulating print and other media uh, uh, physically is a difficult task. Worldwide, there are 45 million people who are totally blind and 135 million who are visually impaired. So the, the, the challenge is huge, and if you think of only 100,000 screen reader installations out there, it's just touching the tip of the iceberg. May I have the next slide? What we're trying to do is make it possible for these folks to read anything they might want to read. Doesn't matter what it is or where it comes from. We want to be able to permit people to easily write anything from letters, school papers, email, whatever it might be. And thirdly, we'd like to help people to, in fact, get on the web do and access all of the various online services that the general sighted folks can easily access with their Windows machines and whatever they may have. Um, with that in mind, um, as we move the ADEPT one forward, we're looking to address the needs of people who read a lot, such as, for example, the 725,000 National Library Service for the Blind Readers. We'd like to go after the 1.5 million folks who currently use computers or need to use computers who are blind or severely visually impaired, and then the 4 million others uh, in our first list. Beyond that, and hopefully within the next year, we hope to go after other disabled and beyond that to the general public. We firmly believe that while the long prey record, the telephone, the typewriter, even the tape recorder were designed with disabilities in mind to help people with disabilities, that if we can find ways in which what we are doing will become generally useful to the general public, uh, we will find the best way to move forward what we're doing and address the wider need out there. Uh, may I have the next slide? What we did when we started Amazeability is we looked for support. Uh, this is a small market. There isn't much desire on the part of the venture capital community to put money into it. At the time we did all of this in 2002, the dot-com crash was well in effect, and there just wasn't any funding. We were very fortunate to go ahead and um, receive federal grants from the United States Department of Education. And what we did in the first phase of this grant procedure or process was to look at the question, if we created simple reading and writing applications that were not um, you know, screen analogs, but in fact totally different and hopefully designed to be very easy, could the visually impaired quickly learn and use them? Secondly, could they use them uh, using voice recognition? And that's been our key, um, how do you say it, theme all the way along here. What we did is we gathered a group of, we, we of course prepared the machine, and then we gathered a group of blind subjects and put them through a rigorous series of tests, uh, long scripts of testing various command scenarios and non-spontaneous utterances, and got some good measures on what was possible. In effect, we found that we could raise scores from the 70-ish um, level uh, for successful commands up into the low 90s and with corrections to the language models for speech recognition even go higher. We also tried tricks like, you know, many of you have seen the so-called command line where you can type commands and look at them and correct them and so forth. We tried a review procedure, again in voice, where people could attempt a command if they got it wrong or if they didn't complete it, they could then complete it um, in a kind of voice editing procedure uh, and then when satisfied, um, tell the adept one to go and execute the command. And again, we, we got good metrics on all of that. What we did find out is that in doing that, it, it, it worked well if you were skilled and, and, and competent and ha you know, content with technology, which many of our first group were. Uh, but it also was difficult, um, particularly if you had no idea of why we were doing what we were doing. So we attempted in our second grant application, which we received from the United States Department of Education, to look at doing natural language processing. Now that means a lot of things to a lot of people. It might mean to some that you just talk in a natural voice and uh, the machine figures out what you're saying and does something. 
but it also implies, in our sense, that the machine also understands a little bit of what you're saying. Sorry? Oh. So um, what we did was, in fact, to working with Carnegie Mellon Universities, the folks at the Speech Consortium, also working on natural language dialogue engines, was to, in fact, build a dialogue engine on the ADEP-1, one where you could talk, give a command, um, and if you didn't complete it after a period of time in the voice recognition process, you, it would then ask you, uh, what would you like to do, knowing the nature of the command based on what you'd already said. You could then fill in the missing words or terms, um, and finally it would ask you to uh, sanction its doing the command. So it was a true dialogue process, um, one in which we tried to use the librarian, the reference librarian model, where the, you know, the machine came back and asked you a question that you know, elicited a, sim a simple answer. And you went on from there. And the trick, of course, was to do it in very few iterations so that it was really efficient. And that turned out to be quite successful. Um, nobody, despite some recognition errors, as you might expect, nobody had trouble with um, getting a complete correct command done in a reasonable period of time. Um, and this group that we used um, of subjects were people who were retired, uh, older people, uh, younger people, a range where we could test how it would be for people who were not, again, as I said, technical or who had not been as we did in the first group, uh, been technology experts, teachers of assistive technology and the like. Well, at the point we came in 2006, we came to the point where we said, well, we now have to get this product out the door. We feel it's eminently valuable and useful, so let's go. So we effectively stopped raising grant money and, um, and really focused on, with our small group, uh, producing the product. And we're getting close now to what we're calling a beta release, um, and um, you know, with all the hope and expectations of the gamble we're taking. Um, may I have the next slide? Oh, I'm sorry, we're on the guidelines. Um, the point of this slide is that after all of the feasibility studies we did and focus groups, we elaborated the following criteria shown in that slide. The first is that we needed to define a complete set of voice terms for controlling all of the applications. And we had in mind not only our base set of applications, which are you know, uh, editing or word processing, uh, web access, um, um, uh, address book, uh, email, uh, reference work access, and so forth, and library access. But we also went beyond that and did the design, uh, user interface design for uh, open office, for example, to have complete compatibility with vendor word processors, um, book scanning with a, with a document scanning, an OCR, um, appointment book and calendar, uh, home accounting, a whole series of applications. And that allowed us to create a command set which is unique and mnemonic and we hope um, easy to learn and use. We then require that those voice commands um, map into um, keyboard commands that were very simple to type. In the natural language mode, you could type full English sentences and commands, but of course, most people who use machines of this sort don't like to do that. We like to use shorthand commands. <clears throat> so for example, open email becomes OE. Uh, open web becomes OW and things of that sort. So they're the first, typically the first letters of the spoken commands and uh, again, hopefully easy to learn and use. We then wanted to have all the commands um, have the sa essentially the same or, or do the same actions. And for the most part, through all of these different applications, uh, most of the same commands do the same actions so that if you learned how to do simple word processing, you could then move on to web, web access, navigation, learning only a few more things above what you already were comfortable with. Um, we also moved ahead to uh, make sure that uh, the commands had very few strokes to happen. Um, again, our target ultimately is all the folks who are older, middle-aged, older, 
your mom and dad, for example, who want to do what the kids are doing but have never really been computer users. Um, and in that sense, we didn't want contortions of having to hit two or three keys at once to make something happen. So we largely restricted all of the commands to be alphanumeric characters and punctuation. There are, I think, only four control characters that are used in the entire set of applications, including the future ones. And these are control C to cancel, uh, control P to define page text unit instead of paragraph, um, control A to go into our formatter for speech tailoring, um, and control F to open up frames uh, in web pages and in you know, applications like OpenOffice. So we hope that will make it easier for people who have only really done typing all their lives to go very quickly into learning how to use the Adept One. Other things that we did were to look at our applications. For example, email can be done entirely by menuing until, of course, you open up a meal in email temporary and you want to, in fact, produce your message. Uh, then, of course, it's free-form dictation and or typing. Um, and by the way, you can type and talk at the same time on the DEP1. But in any event, we realized that, uh, again, from our focus groups and whatnot, that it would be nicer if you could just tell it a single command, verbal or typed, and have it do a whole bunch of stuff at once. Some of the same approach, I think, that uh, TV Raman put into uh, um, Emacs speak with um, tools, as he calls them, I think. Um, and here you could, for example, say open email messages from the Adept One prompt, and go off, start up email, run off to your ISP, get your email, bring it into the inbox, and open it up or start opening up for you. Uh, you can delete an email message from anywhere, any one of the menus in the email system, or in while reading an email message just to get rid of it, and, and commands of that sort. Um, we then went on to other issues. For example, uh, we wanted to be sure that the Adept One didn't speak anything that it didn't have to. That was, you know, trash. If you are using a screen reader on a, on a web page, for example, there's an awful lot of cruft you have to listen to. What we tried very hard to do was to filter all that out so that what you get, for the most part, is a reasonably clean, um, you know, text format. And the only funny word you hear is the word link that tells you that here in this part of the text there's a link you can, you know, execute. Other than that, we don't, um, you know, we clean things up pretty thoroughly. We also wanted to be sure that um, in the end, uh, what we do is extract the knowledge, the information that people want. And so we've tried very hard to explore structure. Uh, in the web page, for example, we pull out what's important and reject all of the stuff that isn't useful or is background or whatever, and allow the, the user to access forms directly, access images if they can be uh, interpreted, ob other objects, and so on, as you'll see later when I get to the web browser. Again, all of this in the context of what we want to be able to do is have people ultimately talk in a, in a convenient, friendly way, just as though the adept one were another person, and have it respond in sensible, useful ways. And one of the things we found that happened uh, with other voice recognition systems that the visually impaired have used is that they have found, OK, uh, what if the command doesn't respond? What if, you know, the sign, is it broken? Uh, is it going off and doing something you didn't mean it to do, or what? <clears throat> so what we've done is implemented methodologies here where you can ask it any time, uh, where are you uh, in the process. Even during dictation, you can do that to find out your context. Uh, and that makes it a lot less um, uh, a difficulty to use this type of technology. Um, may I have the next slide, then? Um, to begin with, our version 1, which we're uh, preparing for release, um, is one in which, as I indicated earlier, um, you, you get the ADEP1 um, on a, a low-cost um, laptop or desktop or whatever. It'll run on any reasonable machine. Um, and when you start it up, you'll be in the ADEP1 main application. It'll ask you what do you want to do. And after that, you can, for example, um, uh, open the address book, uh, 
and put in entries. Um, you could open the email and navigate, get your email, create emails, forward them, whatever you want to do. Um, you can open the library, which allows you to access an online library of books. Um, on my machine here, I have some 20,000 books uh, that is complete books, uh, text, docs, PDFs, audio, various flavors, and whatnot. And I can read them, uh, find them in the library catalog, open them, and read them. And I'll show you a bit of that in a, little, in a, in a few moments. Um, you can do, of course, um, um, navigating through the file system raw and look at all the various files. Uh, you can have a, a use a full strength uh, file manipulation set of procedures to delete, move files, copy them, and all the rest. Again, all in voice. Um, you can also uh, do web access, as I indicated earlier. And lastly, open up a list of reference works, dictionaries, glossaries, technical glossaries, and the rest and easily look up words and get spelling or meanings or what have you. Again, from any context. Um, the next file, uh, next slide, rather. Um, this is the reading, writing, et cetera, or reading process. When you go through the library, what you hear are the titles of books and the author or articles or movies or whatever they might be. Um, um, and you open them. And we don't care what they are. All sizes fit all, as the expression goes. And uh, if it's audio of various flavors, we'll open it, cue it up for listening, and so on. Um, if it's um, text, fine. We'll clean it up and make it presentable. If it's um, a dot .doc or a PDF or whatever, we'll convert it and make it listenable. Um, if it's a daisy book, and I'll come to that in the next slide or so, uh, it'll again open that, cue it for listening and reading, and so on. So pretty much any format you'll find out there, um, uh, we support and can continue in terms of extending the procedure. Uh, we can continue to support and expand this list. When you do um, access a file or, or, or a book in the library, you open up what's called an edit temporary. And you can open up a second one in what's called an other temporary. And you can flip between these. Um, so that, for example, you can open up one item, read it, open up another and take notes about it and save it as a file or send it as email, whatever you might want to do. Um, and um, you can do hide files, that is to say, save documents or pieces of documents. Or you can define a hide file that is itself a document and read it into an existing one you're working on. So the flexibility is enormous here. Um, and lastly, when you're working on your document, a school paper, you can format it for whatever format you might want, centering lines, block indenting, <coughs> putting in headings of all sorts, collimating tables, and all the rest of it, and then tell the adept one to format it for printing and actually print it. Or you can tell it to convert it into Braille, grade two, or technical Braille, and get a Braille copy if you're lucky enough to have a Braille embosser attached. So there's a lot of capability built into this. Um, could I have the next slide? And we come to um, what's called the daisy book, if I'm on, in sync with the slide, I hope. Um, and basically, what you have here, to those who are unfamiliar with the daisy technology, which is audio, I'm sorry, digital audio system, um, and there are other definitions I've heard, but what the idea is is that you get a book uh, in the form of many XML, SML, and other files, a uh, navigation file, and a package file, and all the rest. And when you open it, it provides, if it's a full, fully elaborated DAISY book, you'll get the digital version opened up, and you'll get an audio version, such as is recorded by an actor or whoever, a volunteer reader, queued up to listen to, and you get a table of contents. In terms of the text version, you can navigate through it, reading a line at a time, character at a time if you wanted to, word, sentence, paragraph, or whole block, so just continue to listen to it, ad infinitum to the end of the book if you'd like. Um, if it's a, uh, an audio book, you can navigate it using the arrow keys by section, which you can set as to the level of the section, uh, or by element, meaning an increment of time, or by phrases or what have you, if the, uh, if the recognition is good enough to detect those. Um, and if you're in the table of contents, you can navigate the table of contents to any section you might want. 
Uh, you can use bookmarks. Um, you can open up book objects, which are sidebars and uh, reference notes and all sorts of other goodies that are part of our good complex book. And you can go immediately to them and read them. And there's another command that you can issue which will allow you to tell it to skip those while it's reading the book, if you wish to, or read them in line as you are reading the book. So it's a very flexible approach to packaging uh, a book, particularly those that have lots of components and parts, and, um, and, and that can be addressed and worked on singly. Um, actually, the American Publishers Association, among others, has adopted this as a standard for their ongoing future work. Um, may I have the next slide? As I said, in the navigating to read, um, you can read sentence, word, line, etc. at a time, or groups of those. Um, to write, all we do is we prepend the navigating commands with appropriate editing commands, such as C for change, D for delete, E for exchange, for exchange actions, um, insert before the text unit, and append after. So with these very simple extensions to the command language, you're able to um, do all the editing you might want to do on a document. Um, and when you're through, of course, save the document and or print it or send it into Braille. Uh, the next slide. We're now on the web browser, as we call it. Um, when you start it up, it opens up a web page or downloads a web page, a default you set up, in my case, I default to the New York Times Associated Press News Bulletins. And um, you can skim down it. Um, you can open up a function which allows you to tell it to search for headings, or in fact, for Google results items. Um, and uh, we're adding more of that sort of thing to the intelligence of the page. You can also open up a web link list of all the links on the page. Uh, you can do that for a web objects such as JavaScript or images or what have you. And if they are accessible or can be made accessible, we will do that. Similarly, you can open up the web forms and get a list of all the forms, open whichever one you'd like, fill in the data, submit them, and so forth. Um, web frames um, and uh, uh, web URLs to put in new URLs web history, even web tables, where you're able to extract a table on the web page and structure it to be read a cell at a time. In fact, that's a feature of the main Adept One Word processor. We can do three-dimensional tables where you can move around into, uh, across, and up and down columns of a three-dimensional array of elements. It's a lot of fun, actually, but anyhow. Um, so that's the web browser, um, and again, I hope to show that to you if everything works well. Um, the next slide. Uh, this is, I believe, the architecture slide. Uh, it's the new applications. Oh, no, yeah, sorry. It's a trouble with having so many slides, sorry. Uh, the new applications, these are the short-term version two, version three over the next year or two that we hope to put in that we've already done the specifications for. Um, they include a full professional address book, uh, I'm sorry, appointment book and calendar, uh, book scanner, um, um, uh, a describer, which allows it to look at structured pages such as web pages and describe to you what's on them, uh, giving you an overview and allowing you to look into sections um, and explore them in more detail. A query language, which would allow you to explore the content of such things, as well as your online library of, you know, umpteen thousand books, um, and also um, um, uh, functions like um, uh, GPS one day, home accounting, games, and so on. So we've actually thought it through quite a ways into the future to make this as useful as possible to as wide a group of people as we can. And now we come to the architecture, I believe. And just to give you a, a simple you know, um, ankle bone to the shin bone, et cetera, picture, um, you have a headset with a, with a microphone um, and or keyboard. And you input with these. Uh, the data goes into, for example, the voice recognition through the low level recognizer decoders uh, to what we call ADOT control. 
And this is a middleware, uh, fairly sophisticated piece of middleware, which knows what to do with the language coming in, adds more um, uh, filtering on it to make sure it's right for the right context, and then it passes it on to either the application directly, uh, to a dot format, which is our middleware speech formatter, or to the natural language dialogue engine, <clears throat> for which, with which um, the adept one can dialogue with you if it needs to. So there are all these possibilities for the input, but ultimately it gets to the application, and the application responds uh, through a dot format, which can do all sorts of things with the speech. It can change languages. Uh, it can change the speed, the switch from uh, the Latin alphabet to the international alphabet if you're unsure about pronunciation or spelling. Um, it can speed it up, slow it down, do all sorts of fun things to make the speech exactly what you want. There's a capability, for example, to turn on and off any characters other than alphanumerics and punctuation, I'm sorry, alphanumerics. You can turn off parentheses, brackets, any punctuation, insert variable delays between each, and then set them as permanent defaults if you wish. In my case, I tend to listen to all the punctuation because I do a lot of technical work. But when you're reading a book, um, um, we open it up in what we call narrative mode and shut all those things off. So a dot format can be informed by your commands from the console, or it can be informed by the application and made to do what it's supposed to do. From there, the output goes to, of course, uh, the text-to-speech engines of whatever flavor, and then to your headset or to a speaker. Um, and in between, in the center there, uh, with an actual language processor, there are other functions such as search engine, others which we uh, know how to put in there and which are future work for us to do. And we do hope that we'll be able to do a lot of this with you folks at Google. Um, we really want to Googleize, uh, if you wish, in both ways of spelling that phrase, um, the adept one. Uh, we think you guys are doing a wonderful piece of work with what you have going on here. Um, I'm going to, well, I'm going to hold off on the future versions and get to the demo. Now, this is always quite problematical because um, we're in an open room, ambient noise, even the adept one itself talking. Uh, fortunately, it's a little less uh, dangerous than other places I've been in where the speakers have been right over my head, basically, and that's pretty problematical. I'm only going to try the uh, command and control for a number of things, uh, and I'm not going to try the dictation, although uh, we are testing that and it's getting better every day. Um, and in a quiet situation, I might try that, but not, not here. Um, the first thing I will do is um, find out where things are. Um, then I'm going to log in uh, as the tutorial client. I can log in as myself or as a support person and get downloads and new upgrades from Amazability. But I'm going to log in as tutorial, where we have a complete online set of tutorials uh, for all the functions of the ADEPT-1, telling you how to do editing, how to format documents for print and braille, how to use and catalog the library, the web browser, dot, dot, dot. And similarly, we have a folder full of all the manuals which go into detail ad nauseum. There are also online help pages, context-sensitive summaries and command lists, as well as a full web-style set of help pages for you to navigate through if you really want to do online reading of that sort. So it's a fairly complete, I think we hope, robust package for the folks we're aiming at. Um, so I'm going to, as I said, log in, and then I'm going to navigate to the library, open library rather, navigate the catalog a little bit. Um, and uh, I'm going to open up a couple of books. Um, I'm going to open up a, then through the uh, file system file manager, I'm going to open up an audio file, stop and start it, and play games of that sort. Um, one thing I can say um, about all of the menus, no matter where they are or what they are, you can open a menu, go to the top or bottom, 
You can skip any number of entries in a menu you might wish, and this of course includes uh, file folders and the like. You can search all menus, so you can indicate a search and look for something more quickly than simply navigating around in it. So moving around in menus of lists of things that get, can get pretty fast. Um, although again, as I said, with dictation, I'm not going to attempt that in this room. Where am I? The microphone is off. You are not logged in. I'm sorry, what? You all right? Where am I? The microphone is off. You are not logged in. Hello, Adept One. Hello, this is the Adept One. Tutorial. Tutorial. Password. Lessons. Amazeability. Hello, Tutorial. What do you want to do? Open library, please. Open library. Library catalog. Alphabetic listing of items by title. Open. A book of remarkable criminals minus H. B. Irving. Next. A born shell programming tutorial for learning about using the Unix shell minus Steve Parker. 333. 333. Bergson and his philosophy minus J. Alexander Gunn. Next. Barrack the Briton minus George Alfred Henty. Next. Berlin minus Louise Muehlbach. Minus 11. Minus 11. Bell Amy minus Henry Guy de Maupassant. Minus. Uh, Minus two. Minus two. Baggers eight minus Richard Nick calls. Previous. Baggers opera minus John Gay. Open. Opening file, please wait. Ready. Sentence one one one. Sentence one one one. And truly, my dear, that is a great blessing. Next. Peachum. Next. I don't know how to interpret quote, unit quote. Next. What to Dickens is the woman always a whimpering about murder for? <laughs> Open library. Open library. Library catalog. A book of remarkable criminals minus H. B. Irving. Close. Alphabetic listing of items by title. Next. Articles. Next. I don't know how to interpret quote, no quote. Next. Arts and crafts. Next. Author index. Next. Business. Next. Computers. Bottom. Bottom. Venture capital index. Previous. United States government. Previous. United Nations. Top. Top. Alphabetic listing of items by title. Three. Three. Author index. Open. A. Three. Three. C. Next. D. Open. A J. Dawson. Eight. Eight. Alexander Duma. Open. Black tulip minus Alexander Duma. Next. Bracabrac with accents minus Alexander Duma. Open. Opening file, please wait. Ready. Sentence 111. Sentence 111. Son maître l'avait poursuivi, mais il n'osa faire le même saut que lui. Next. I don't know how to interpret <coughs> quote, le next quote. Next. Il fut obligé de descendre et de le poursuivre par la porte. File flip. File flip. Edit temporary. Next. No gentleman is ever looked upon the worse for killing a man in his own defense, and if business cannot be carried on without it, what would you have a gentleman do? Open path, please. Open path. Folder menuing underway. Empty. Close. Practice. Top. Top. Lessons. Open. Adapt. One editing period. Doc. Next. Creating documents, period, doc. Next. Daisy books, period, doc. Next. Email and address book, period, doc. Close. Lessons. Next. Manuals. Open. Adapt one user guide, period, doc. Next. 
formatting text period, doc. Next. Installation guide period, doc. Close. Manuals. Seven. Seven. Part seven formatting speech and audio. Open. Gungaten period, MP3. Open. Gunga Din by Rudyard Kipling, as read and performed by Tom Franks. Cancel. You may talk a gin and beer when you're quartered. Cancelled. Goodbye, Adept I don't one. know how to interpret quote, the next quote. Goodbye, Adept One. Goodbye, tutorial. Um, as you see, I've opened up um, uh, an English book, uh, that is a book in English, um, a French book. Uh, bounce back and forth between them, and I've now opened up an audio file. Um, I will now continue that audio file, again, in complete simulation of what you might do if you had recorded a lesson, and you were now playing the lesson at home, and you wanted to listen to it and take notes uh, in preparation for writing a paper or whatever might, you might want to do. File proceed. Oh, wait. Um, hello, Adept One. Hello, Adept One. Hello, tutorial. File proceed. File proceed. Be you when you're quartered safe out here, and you're sent to penny fights and aldershot it. But when it comes to slaughter, you'll Cancel. do your work on... I don't know how to interpret, quote, the at sign. Cancel. The I for to, quote, no menu accessible right now. Cancel. Canceled. Next. Next. Misses. File dismiss. File dismiss. Dismiss edit file question mark. Yes. Yes. Temporary files deleted. File flip. File flip. Other temporary. Next. Pendant ce temps, le fugitif avait gagné plus de 200 pas. File dismiss. File dismiss. Dismiss other file question mark. Yes. Yes. Temporary files deleted. Adapt one. Open web new. Open web new. Opening web page, please wait. Browsing. Line. Line. Title. Amazability homepage. One one. One one. Link order now. Previous. Link examples. Open web jump. Open web jump. Opening link. Browsing. Enter. Title. Amazability examples. Sentence 1-1. One, one. Sentence 1-1. One, one. Accessing your library of books and other items. You may want to read BRIC of BRAC by Alexander Dumas. Where am I? You are tutorial. You are with a web page open. In folder practice. Last input S. 11. Open web bookmarks. Open web bookmarks. Bookmarks. Google. Open. Disposition. Open. Go to. Opening bookmark. Browsing. Open web forms. Open web forms. Forms. Form 1F. Oops. Yeah. Two. Out of range. Yeah, thank you. So. Goodbye, Depth One. Goodbye, tutorial. I'm going to um, open the form and simply type in the name this time. Uh, again, as I said, to avoid fumbling with dictation in this ambience. Um, hello, Depth One. Hello, tutorial. Cancel. Canceled. Open. Input text Q. Open. Data. Insert. Cancelled. Insert. Append. Append. Dictating. Adapt. One. Escape. Escape. Editing. Line. Line. Adapt. One. Close. Input text Q. Next. 
Submit Google search. Open. Submitting form. Browsing. Enter. Title, Adapt One. Google search. Web link images, link maps, link news, link shopping, link mail, link more, link video, link Quiet. groups, link books, link scholar, link finance, link blogs, Quiet. link YouTube, link ca Open web search. Open web search, web search options, find heading. Next. Find Google result, find, dictating. Escape. Escape. Next. Find Google result, Open. find, dictating. Oh. It's hearing itself. Um, cancel. Escape. Escape. Next. Find Google result. Open. I don't know how to interpret quote. Harry, tell how about it so quote. Open. I don't know how to interpret quote. Open quote. Link adapt one undeviantert. Link adapt one undeviantert. Find next. Find next. Link amazeability adapt one. Next. Amazeability, next. Inc. Find I don't next. know how to interpret quote, new quote. Find next. Find next. Link adapt one on techno, ready. Open web links. Open web links, links, images. Two, two. Two, two. Adapt one. Next. Adapt one. Next. Cached. Next. Similar pages. Next. Amazeability. Open. Opening link. Browsing. Enter. Title, Amazeability Adept 1. Open web history. Open web history, history. Amazeability Adept 1. Next. Adept 1 minus Google search. Open. Opening link. Browsing. Open. I don't know how to interpret quote, open quote. Line. 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 Title. Adapt one. Google search. Find next. Find next. Link adapt one on DeviantArt. Quit. Quit. Adapt one. Goodbye, adapt one. Goodbye, tutorial. As I said earlier, in addition to these various commands, there are web objects, uh, tables, and whatnot that it could open up and do things with. <clears throat> um, I think it's listening to itself quite a bit, as well as um, you know, occasionally making uh, recognition errors, I suspect. Um, hello, Adept1. Hello, Adept1. Hello, tutorial. Open email messages. Open email messages. Checking mailbox, please wait. Nothing new in mailbox, period. Email, inbox. Next. Compose message. Open. Opening file, please wait. Ready. Line. Line. From colon, adapt. One tutorial less than tutorial at sign. Amazeability, period. COM greater than. Next. To colon. Open address book. Open address book. Names. Amazeability support. Next. Amazeability support. Open. Fields. Title. Next. First name. Next. Middle name. 3-3. Three, 3-3. Three. Three, three. Company main phone. Next. Home fax. 2-2. Two, 2-2. Two. 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 E minus mail type. Close. Names. Amazeability support. Goodbye, Adept 1. Goodbye, tutorial. The address book contains, of course, in the names field as many as you'd like. In this tutorial account, uh, there's only one, namely Amazeability support. But each element or name can have a full list of fields associated with it, each of which has a data text box that can be filled in. Um, and uh, 
They range from the first name all the way to a log if you want to keep a log concerning the name if, uh, if you wish. Now I'm going to copy the email address into the to field of my email message. Hello, DEP1. Hello, tutorial. Copy fields. Copy fields. Address copied. Quit. Quit. Viewing message. Enter. To colon, amazeability supports less than support hat sign, amazeability period, com greater than. Next. CC colon. Next. BCC colon. Next. Subject colon. Append. Dictating. T. Three delete. Three. Delete. T. E delete. E. Test escape. Viewing message. Enter. Subject colon test. Next. <coughs> minus 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 minus. Next. Bottom of file. Insert. Dictating. Hello. Escape. Viewing message. Goodbye, Dep1. Goodbye, tutorial. Now in this email message template here, I put in a trivial subject and a trivial message at the bottom. Um, I could now go into the menuing procedure and have this uh, saved in drafts or whatever. I'm going to simply issue the command to have it transmitted to, uh, in this case, it'll go back to amazeability support. Hello, Adept one Hello, tutorial. Open email transmit. Open email transmit. Sending message. Email. Messages. Quit. Quit. Adept 1. Goodbye, Adept 1. Goodbye, tutorial. Well, that gives you a flavor of how the Adept No one edit works. file open. I hit the keyboard with the headset. Uh, that gives you a sense of how it works. Uh, I very rarely, and other people we've tested, very rarely have errors when there's not a big room like this with sound coming back. It's particularly vulnerable when we um, are playing an audio file because, of course, we can control it to avoid listening while it's speaking, but we can't do that, of course, when it's playing streaming audio. But in any event, um, moving on just to the slides to complete that set, um, we have, I think, the future versions up? Uh, yes. Okay. And basically what we look to do in the short term um, is to uh, improve our full dictation uh, voice recognition uh, and expand the natural language dialogue, di dialogue and procedure. Um, next, uh, we look to extend what we've already started to do with email into what we call transaction NLP or natural language processing, where you can define using the command line procedures here, uh, or um, we, um, you know, as the supply as the vendor here, uh, could do more elaborate ones, that is to say, provide transaction level things that can be done. For example, you could ask the adept one, uh, what books do you have on physical chemistry? Or what do you have by um, Charles Dickens? And uh, the DEP one would proceed to look through its library uh, and tell you what it might have. You could command it to go on the web and find what it could find on that using, for example, Google services, um, and even go beyond that to downloading the book if it were available anywhere. Um, you could also, um, we hope, do transactions on the web, such as buying items at Amazon or what have you where it would go through as much of the process in a secure mode as possible. Again, um, aimed at allowing the average person who doesn't want to go through all that screen flipping and you know, um, uh, clicking and whatnot to uh, accomplish something. We're trying to get as close to the ideal as one can get where you're talking to another person who's an intelligent, sighted viewer with a screen who is doing all of these things without telling you about them 
and saving you the, the, the you know, trouble of having to hear all of the separate steps. Um, we then wish to do new applications and then to provide a multi-platform version which will run on most everybody's machine uh, and then lastly miniaturize so that we can have portables that can be carried about or put into the kitchen and used while you're cooking dinner uh, or used in a library or wherever you might want to use such a device. Again, talking to it as appropriate or when necessary typing on the keyboard or using the touchpad to uh, input data if you have to. Um, and the summary page, um, again our goal is to provide assistive technology in the general sense that provides easy to use applications for people to perform job and school tasks. And we're doing that by providing the strongest practical natural language processing capability we can uh, that would allow people to be as natural as they can be using such services. So are, are there any questions or? In the, in the demo, uh, we could hear you and we could hear the NF1 voice interacting. Yes. If someone was, a sighted person was sitting next to you, would they see all these events occurring on the screen? Yes. The, um, the screen right now um, on the laptop provides a fairly simple dialogue picture of what's going back and forth. So you would see everything if you were looking at it, yeah. But again, we're not doing in, in, or trying to do a screen reader, so we're not projecting the page. We can do that. Uh, for example, we could display full web pages and things of that sort, uh, especially in future versions where that may be necessary for partially sighted and beyond. But we're really trying to approach the analog of talking to somebody live. Thank you. Yeah. Anyone else? Well, thank you. Oh.